Hey everyone, welcome to Mason Zero MTG. Today we're back with another installment of my cube series, looking at awesome cube cards from the brand new set, in this case, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Sometimes I have some hot takes or some cards that are personal preferences, but I think all of these picks are ones that are going to be pretty popular with cubers. Either way, I hope you'll enjoy my thoughts on putting these cards into various cubes. As always, I try to keep an average cube in mind, but cubes do vary in power level. A powerful cube may consider some of these cards, but not all of them, and a less powerful cube may appreciate the budget-oriented role players this set gives. Now, let's get into the top five. Lion Sash. Oh, hello there, white scavenging ooze. This is a pretty fascinating card, and it does essentially what cube all-star scavenging ooze does. There is a little bit of give and take with the scoos. Lion Sash comes in with one less power and toughness for the same mana value. But when you exile a card from a graveyard, you get a counter on Lion Sash if it was a permanent, whereas the ooze needs it to be a creature specifically. However, the ooze does gain one life if it's a creature, so they do very slightly, but we know the effect is good. One big detail that makes Lion Sash great is that it has reconfigure, which lets you essentially equip it to a creature, and those counters buff up the equipped creature as well. An equipment that becomes a creature when it's unattached and also gets bigger over time is fantastic. The card is of course an artifact, this leaves it open to both artifact and creature removal, but also contributes to artifact synergies, which may or may not be super relevant in white. Either way, this card will likely see play in many cubes of various power levels if you're already playing scavenging news. Reinforced Ronin. Do you love Ragavan but don't have wads of cash lying around to put one into your cube? Then Reinforced Ronin might be your new favorite card. This is a 2-2 with haste for 1 mana, but you have to return it to your hand at the end of the turn. So it's kind of like playing Ragavan for its mana cost, but actually using the dash ability. Now obviously this doesn't have the amazing combat damage trigger that Ragavan has, but it is still quite good as an aggressive red card. It dodges any sorcery speed removal, and when it gets outclassed later in the game, you can simply cycle it. This is a solid red aggro card, especially if you have a cube on a budget. On top of that, it's an artifact creature, which can be quite relevant in red. Great to combine with a goblin welder to get a better artifact back from your graveyard. Eater of Virtue. Eater of Virtue, not a demon card name somehow, is an equipment that is potentially better than the commonly cubed card Bone Splitter. It has the same stats and costs, but with additional text on it. When the equipped creature dies, you exile it. Now this might not be relevant, but in a black deck it probably is a disadvantage. But exiling the things isn't all bad. The equipped creature has the keyword abilities of the creatures exiled with it. It actually lists all of the common keywords without listing any random set specific keywords. Looking at you, Audric. This is probably best in a white deck with abilities like First Strike and Life Link and Vigilance running around. This is usually the keyword soup color, and a color that likes equipment on top of that. If you're running Bone Splitter currently, Eater of Virtue should definitely be a consideration for your cube either to replace it or to run alongside it. Boseju Who Endures Boseju Who Endures is a green land card that has been in a lot of magic conversations recently, as it's going to likely become a commonly played card in every format it's legal in. So let's hope you open one in a booster pack, because it's going to be pretty expensive to purchase. It doesn't have any of the basic land types, so it's not fetchable, but it does come into play as an untapped green source. If you don't need the land, it also has a channel ability that lets you discard it from your hand to activate. For just 2 mana and discarding this card, you can destroy an artifact, enchantment, or non-basic land, and its controller searches for a land with a basic land type and puts it into play. It also costs 1 less for each legendary creature you control, so it could cost only 1 green mana. On top of that, channel is an ability, not casting the spell, so it's essentially uncounterable. The only downside, other than your opponent getting a land, is that the opponent must control the permanent, so you can't do this on your own permanent to fix your mana or search for a specific land card. But it's still essentially a really good two-mode card, and I think most people would argue that it's better than pretty much any of the modal double-faced rare or mythic lands from Zendikar Rising, which is just sad. However, in this case, the fact that it's legendary is supposed to be a balance in a 4-of format, but in something like Cube or Commander, it is not a disadvantage at all, because we're only playing one. Mind Link Mech. I don't care about the ability. This is a 4-3 for 3 mana that only requires you to tap a 1 power creature to make it able to attack, and it's in blue. 
this is a great card, but it also has more text on it than just those stats. When it becomes crewed for the first time, you can turn it into a copy of a creature that crewed it, except it retains all of its stats. This doesn't provide a ton of value, since the creature will be tapped and likely unable to attack, but it lets you protect that original creature and attack in with something much more evasive. Want to crew it with your Corsero crew fix so that you don't risk losing its effects to combat? Sure, sounds great. It also means you can double up on abilities such as the landfall ability on Corsero crew fix by temporarily cloning it. There is probably enough incidental value that can be had from Mindlink mech that it's worth running for the 3 mana 4 3 flying body. Anyways, that is my top 5 list of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty cards for Cube, and I don't think there should be too much debate here. Obviously, as usual, there will be cards that are better for more specific cubes, so I'd love to hear how Containment Construct is perfect for your Madness Cube, or how all the new ninjas are great for your cube's ninja sub-theme, so let me know in the comments below.